Hello and welcome to the Met Office 10 Day Trend. This has been recorded on the final day of January, so I thought it'd be interesting not just to cover the next 10 days, but to look at some of the signals that are emerging for how weather patterns may evolve throughout February. More on that in a moment, but it's certainly been an interesting winter so far. We've had some stormy spells and we've also had some cold spells. And at the moment, a very powerful jet stream is running across the Atlantic and this has explosively deepened an area of low pressure which, through Wednesday night, will run into Norway. Now, Norway is used to windy weather and deep lows, but this is something else. Red warnings in force for Norway, and they've named it Storm Ingen. Now, the UK has been spared the worst of this, although yellow warnings were in force for the strong winds for northern parts of the country earlier on. But the storm track has shifted north compared with how it was throughout much of autumn and the first half of winter. And we'll continue to see that north shifted storm track through the coming days. Now that means a couple of things. First of all, we've got higher pressure to the south, so generally drier towards the south, wetter towards the north. Secondly, this tight pressure gradient remains. Although the lows are moving towards Iceland and Norway and so on, we've still got tightly packed isobars because of this pressure gradient across the country. So still blustery and we've still got some very mild air being moved into the UK from the Atlantic. And that's certainly the case on Friday, an exceptionally mild day and even more so overnight. We start the day with those gusty winds, not compared to, nothing compared to the storms that we saw last week, but still the potential 50 mile per hour wind gusts in places, 55 perhaps, in one or two spots. And the winds will be bouncing over the hills of the Pennines and the Scottish mountains could be a troublesome crosswind, for example, for the A1 and the M1 and so on. So tricky driving conditions, perhaps first thing Friday because of that blustery weather. A lot of places, because of that westerly or southwesterly influence, will be covered in clouds. So a grey start to the day, best of any brightness towards the east and southeast, but it will be a very mild start to the day. And as the day unfolds, we're going to see plenty of damp weather, especially over western hills where there'll be a covering of hill fog and more especially the northwest of Scotland where the rain will be persistent. Although not particularly heavy, it's going to be mostly light to moderate rain and drizzle through the day. Always drier towards the southeast and very mild across the country, particularly where the wind warms up on its passage over higher ground. So 14 Celsius there for Aberdeen, 13 in the south and so on. Most places in the double figures on Friday afternoon, but it will be grey, it will be breezy and damp. Fast forward to Saturday morning and it's a mild start for many with double figures, perhaps even 11 or 12 Celsius first thing in some spots. But it is a cloudy and damp start for parts of England and Wales, particularly towards the west. Now, brighter skies will emerge across Scotland with some showers, and these showers will be falling as snow over the mountains. Then it will be a bit colder in the north and northeast of Scotland as well, because we've seen the front that is marking the boundary between mild air to the south and colder air further north. That's shifting south. So, some persistent rain along that frontal boundary emerging into uh, the northern part of England there, North Wales, for example, through Saturday afternoon. But that front really just wriggling across central parts of the UK before on Sunday it shifts north again. And as you can see, having seen some cold air into the north, the mild air returns. And Sunday looks very similar to Friday, this west to southwesterly influence, high pressure to the south, lower pressure to the north. And it's grey, it's damp in places, but the more persistent rain will be across Northern Ireland, Western Scotland first thing, into northern parts of England, parts of Wales as well, seeing some wet weather. But increasingly it is wetter uh, across Western Scotland and uh, it's drier towards the south as the afternoon gets going. A lot of cloud, again a blustery breeze, but it is mild, temperatures of 12, 13, perhaps 14 Celsius, apart from the northeast of Scotland where it will be much colder, 5 to 8 Celsius, although not far from average here. So a weekend of grey skies, gusty winds, but also relatively high temperatures for the time of year. Then into Sunday nights, that front just wriggles across parts of northern UK, bringing further spells of rain before starting to slide south. However, for Monday midday, well, some computer models have it across central parts of the UK, but I wouldn't take the position from this graphic too literally because there's a lot of uncertainty in terms of its position. Some computer models have it further north, some computer models have it further south. And that uncertainty in the position of that boundary between very mild, grey, damp weather 
to the south and much colder but brighter weather to the north, well, that boundary uncertainty really continues throughout next week. In fact, next week becomes very uncertain as far as the forecast is concerned, more than usual. This graphic tries to illustrate the confidence or the amount of uncertainty, certainty we have in the forecast. And it basically looks at the variation in computer models uh, when you run the computer models dozens of times when they're all saying the same thing, you can say you're confident in the weather forecast and that's uh, where these numbers come in. So one would mean a lot of confidence in the computer models, zero would be virtually no confidence. And on average, over time, the confidence obviously decreases because you're getting further ahead and the computer model output tends to diverge. That's the average line in the middle, the dotted line. But this is the current forecast, this is that line. And so much higher confidence than usual for the weekend. Computer models are all saying the same thing, basically that westerly uh, breeze from the Atlantic bringing cloud and some outbreaks of rain. But from Monday onwards, the confidence level drops off a cliff. And by Wednesday, Thursday, it really is about as least confident as you can get. And that means that all the computer models are saying all sorts of different things. And that is illustrated by this. So this shows the kinds of weather patterns we can expect on each day going out to the next two weeks. They're color coded, but they basically show different themes for the UK's weather. And westerlies are illustrated by the dark blue here. High confidence, they're all saying westerlies up until the end of the weekend. Then into next week, you get all sorts of different colors indicating that all sorts of different weather patterns could occur. So does that mean we don't have a clue? Well, no, not really. There are some common themes emerging. And this is uh, one type of theme that's starting to emerge for the second half of next week. This looks at Saturday and it shows low pressure sitting further south across the UK than how we start the week. And that would allow colder air, but it would remain unsettled. And with colder air in place, you'd see more wintry hazards across northern parts of the UK. Some hill snow, perhaps some snow at lower levels, and some icy patches and so on, if this were to occur. This is slightly more likely as a solution for the end of next week. But this is also possible. See, there's not much difference. We've still got low pressure. It's just in a slightly different place. It allows more of a southwesterly influence. So milder air continuing across the UK and generally wet and breezy conditions. So what we can say through next week is that low pressure is the common theme. It's just about the track of that low. And what we're seeing through next week is this uncertain transition period because the computer models kind of know where they want to end up in the middle of February, it's how they get there. And through next week, one of the themes that, that is starting to emerge is that the jet stream starting to sink south, that boundary between mild and cold starting to sink south. And so there are more and more models that suggest colder air appearing later next week, but not all of them are suggesting that. Here's a temperature trend for southern parts of the UK, just to indicate that. No northern parts of the UK are very similar, but there's more uncertainty for southern parts of the UK, so it's more interesting to look at this one. And what it's basically suggesting is very mild conditions, temperatures in the double figures, both by day and by night through the weekend, not much uncertainty. The temperature range is quite small from the different computer models. Then, latter half of next week, these boxes get very large. That means that uh, basically, there is a large number of computer models that keep things mild, but also an increasing number that start to turn things much colder. So more and more uncertainty next week about the storm track, basically, where those lows are going to be moving. And only small differences, 100 to 500 miles or so of the storm track would, of course, make a big difference in terms of how cold or how mild it is. But here's a look at the confidence graph again, but this time out to 45 days. There's the uncertainty for next week, but then mid for February, this big peak in confidence. And actually, what this would just, just suggest is that there's more confidence in the forecast for the middle of February compared with next week. So the computer models are transitioning next week to something, and they're more confident about what that something is than the transition period. And what are they transitioning to? Well, these solid reds that quite confidently appear around the 16th, 17th, 18th of February. What does that look like? This kind of thing. 
higher pressure close to the UK, what we call a block setup because it's blocking low pressure coming in from the Atlantic. Now, higher pressure close to the UK would lead to colder weather because you get more overnight frosts and so on, but you'd also get drier conditions. This is one possibility. Another possibility is that higher pressure is further west for the middle of February and you get more of a northerly influence, so even colder. But we're talking 18 days away. So even though confidence is higher for the middle of February than you'd typically see 18 days away, it's still 18 days away. So this is by no means certain. It's just the slightly favoured outcome at the moment. So what does all that mean? February starts mild and blustery with a lot of cloud cover through the weekend and some outbreaks of rain, particularly in the west and the northwest. Then through next week, there's this uncertain transition period as the jet stream wobbles. Will it wobble to the south of the UK or stay to the north? That's the big question mark. But eventually, there is this emerging signal for it to turn drier and colder later certainly for the second half of February. That's what the signals are telling us at the moment. But of course, we'll keep you updated right here at the Met Office as and when anything changes. And make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel so you never miss our updates. Bye-bye.